What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to look at arrays one final time. And in the first couple videos, if I if you haven't seen those, I'd recommend you watch those. We looked at the first one, making a basic array, a horizontal array in a family. And then the second video we took that family and added a vertical array on top of it. So we had instance parameters set to where we can have this family array any number of rows and columns that we want. So here I am, and this is what it is really. And for this video, you don't necessarily have to watch those other two, but if you want to see how this came to be, then I'd recommend go checking those out. Um, but if I change this to five and five or five and seven, whatever, we can see that I get, you know, five rows, I get five columns, seven rows, all this, whatever. So what we want to look at this in this video is what happens when I change these numbers to one. So one, if you're familiar with arrays at all and the number one in an array, that things kind of blow up. Things don't work. And so if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I really hope you do, please, please, please demolish that like button. Helps me very, very much. Okay, getting into it now. So the, I mean, really, the first thing I want to do is change either one of these parameters to one and I'll show you exactly what happens and what will inevitably happen to any array that you have. So when I change this to one, oh, what, whoa, what's going on here? Well, let's see, an error occurred in the family. Yes, yes, yes. Can't make horizontal phase. It's just going to delete it. I click OK and it's gone. <laughs> so what the heck is going on? Well, that is telling me that I have some problems <laughs> and yeah, we, we know. But on top of that, I have to deal with an array that may be changed to one because, you know, someone else might be using this array and it turns out they realize, oh, I only need one row. Well, okay. <laughs> that's what happens. Uh, it blows up, it, it's deleted, and that's it. So what do we need to do? Well, um, in a sense, we're trying to deal with the case to where we have one. And so I'm not saying that it's a next necessarily that we're trying to trick these families but we're basically giving these families an alternate and once we are in the family again we actually just need to add some parameters change them around and maybe even mess with some formulas because we need to make sure that the number that's inputted while it will be or could be one or even zero we need to find a way to have the family react to that so we don't get errors. So let's go into the parameters so we can deal with that. So what we have here are our parameters. And I've got my horizontal number and my vertical number. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually, we're going to just move some things around. So what I'm going to do is make both of these. I'm going to change the name from horizontal number to horizontal array. And then do the same for vertical. And I actually want to go ahead and change where they're sorted. And so I want to put those just in other so they fall to the bottom. And so the thing to remember here is that what I'm messing with now and moving around is actually what is being pulled and being you know pulled from the array itself. But what I'm going to do now is actually go in and make new parameters that the user is going to impact as far as horizontal and array. And okay, so here we go. So horizontal number. Basically, we're making the same thing that we just changed, like the name. And we need to make sure that this is an integer. And I want to put this back in general. That makes the most sense to me. So there's my horizontal number, whatever, whatever. And then I'm going to make another one that is a vertical number. Vertical number. And then again, I want this to be an integer and have this fall under the general tab and instance. So where we are now, we have a lot to work with because we almost have duplicated data here, which we really don't. And you'll see why we don't here in a second. So here's our actual array values. And so basically we want the user to deal with these general numbers, these general parameters, and then have those numbers affect the array. If we do it this way, that means we have more control because we can access what the user has inputted to affect these numbers. So it's going to be the same formula on both of them. And so it's going to be an if statement. So if horizontal number 
is less than two because two, any like an array that is less than two, whether it's zero or one, won't work. It'll just blow up and explode like we saw. So we need a way to deal with this. So if the horizontal number is less than two, what number do we want to make this array? Well, we want to actually have it default to two. Okay. And then what happens if the horizontal number is not less than two? Well, then we just let it be horizontal number. So I'm just going to type that in again, horizontal number. There we go. So look at this. So right now I have the horizontal array is two. And that's because my horizontal number up here is zero. So let's change this to three. So as soon as I change that to three, it's now three. Like this is the actual array values that we'll see. We'll see three objects. So if I come in here as a user and change this to five, I'll then have five array objects. Now, here's the thing. Once I change this to one, remember, I now default to two. So this means the array won't break, which is fantastic. Now, you might say, well, what the heck? Why? <laughs> How are we going to deal with two? Like, we'll have an array of two, but we need actually one. Well, that object that I copied, we're going to use that, and we're going to have to play with some visibility. Now, the first thing I want to do is also copy this exact same thing down to the vertical and just replace this with vertical. Vertical and vertical. Of course, I can't spell or add spaces correctly, and I need a parentheses here. There we go. Okay. So let's just make these three so that we know that they're working. And I'll press OK. And now we've got a three by three, which we would expect to see. So what I need to do now is actually, I'm going to come into a, a basic level plan here. And what I'm going to do now is make sure that I have a way of turning these off if they're of value that is less than two basically because what we want to do is turn off the array if the number is less than two and then show something else okay so what do well what are we going to show well <laughs> what we're actually going to do is show just a single object just one and so in my vertical array here this is it's easy enough to do this here if i come in here and i choose edit group and i just literally copy this Control c get out of the group and then I choose to paste this in the same place. Okay. Well, what happened here? Well, that means I have a single object that is not associated to the group or the array. And so what do I want to do now? Well, I actually want to give this a visibility parameter. And so I'm going to call this single H for single horizontal. And I want to make this an instance. I often want to make this parameter, this visibility parameter, work in tandem or like use the same kind of parameter as I have my whole array. And then I want to put this under visibility just so things are a little more organized. Okay. And so I have this great. Well, I, if I come back in here, this isn't quite done yet because I have everything working, but I need a way to turn not only off the array, but I need to a way to turn on that single component and have them work op opposite of each other. So I need to make another visibility parameter and I'm going to call this just a what, array, array horizontal for array H. So basically saying this horizontal array is on, of course, I need to make this a visibility parameter. Yes, no. So array H and then yes, no. And then I want to put this under visibility right there. Have it be an instance parameter. Okay. So there we go. So what are we working with here? Well, I have my array visibility and I have my, my single object for the horizontal visibility. And okay, so what do I do at this point? Well, I need to actually tie this back to some of these values. And so we are only, basically we only want to see that single, single horizontal array value if this horizontal array ends up being less than two. So we can either we can access that multiple ways. We can say, well, we're looking for this number or we can just look for this number. So I could say all I would really need to do is horizontal number, because this is the user's input a number, is less than two. Okay, and so look at this. So I have my horizontal number is three. Well then that means we're not going to see that single object. We're going to see the actual array, which is fantastic. 
Now let's change that number to one. Well, look at that. So now the single object is now turned on. Now I just need to find a way to get the array turned off. Well, we're just going to do the inverse of this single H. And so I can come in here and go not single H. Look at that. And so let's do this one more time. If I change this horizontal number from one to five, we'll, 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 we will know that the array is working. And look, the array is then a visible, and then the single object is no longer visible. Okay, this is great. Now, what I need to do is come into this array, as in like go into the group, and literally tie these to the visibility parameter that is looking at the array. So here we go. I've got my single H and, and my array. I want This is the array, okay? So now all of these objects, because it's a group, are now associated to that array object. So this is something I love to do. So come down here, the last button here, preview visibility on. Okay, so this is all this, whenever you see preview visibility, that is exactly what you will see in your project given these parameter settings. So let's come over here and change this horizontal number to one. And we hit apply. Okay, whoa, okay, what happened here? Well, so now what has happened is that the horizontal number has defaulted to two. As we can see that horizontal array, that value there is two. So we will always see two. Of course, I've been messing this up the whole time. These actually need to be renamed to V instead of H because we're working with the vertical. So vertical, and then rename this vertical. Okay, so there we go. And so let's go ahead and test this out. You know, with all those applied, we can see that my parameter value changed there. With all this applied, if I change this vertical number now from three to let's say one, then, and I hit apply, we can see what we see. All right, what are we looking at here? Well, and of course I need to change this to vertical number. Of course we're working with num the verticals, not the horizontals. Okay, and so what we have now is you know, we, we see all of it here, but let's test this out. If I change this vertical number from three to one, we need to hopefully, if everything's working, we'll actually see one row, you know, like uh, verticals. Hit apply, look at that. Okay, and so th what is this? Let's run through this one more time. I've got the vertical number is one. The array is off. There's no array. It's there and it's a value of two, but it's just hidden, it's not there. But what we're actually seeing is that single object and that's exactly what we want. And if I change this to six, then I have another ver another horizontal. It, this is working really well. Okay, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we're well on our way because we've dealt with everything except <laughs> the horizontal. So let's come in here and let's see what happens when I change this horizontal number to one. I actually see two. Well, mm, why is that? Well, it's because I don't have a, just a single object and that single object is what I would need to copy in and just apply that single object there. So with all that done, I have my verticals done. I actually need to go into my horizontal family here. I'm gonna edit the group, go into my horizontal, and we basically need to do the exact same thing, but a little, little toned down, but for this exact same family. So look at this here. So what I'm gonna do is, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually edit this, I'm going to copy this, and again, I'm going to get, get out of the group, but then paste this in the same place. And then I'm going to make a visibility parameter while that is still selected. And I'm going to call this, this one will be single H. <laughs> single H. Have this be an instance parameter, and visibility works. Hit OK. There we go. And so now I'm going to go back into the array itself and again use using this I want to make a visibility parameter that is associated to the array so I'll call this array h array h there we go instant parameter and have this fall under visibility as well okay so with that we can look at our parameters and start adding the other formulas that we need all right and so now what are we looking at? Well, we see that we have our arrays there and there's nothing driving those at all. So what do we really need to do? Well, we can keep this pretty simple. So if I, 
uh, because I, I actually do need to make that other array. So I'm going to, again, rename this one from horizontal number to horizontal array. So we know it's the actual array values. Have this fall under other because we don't need to worry about this as much. But then I do need to make a user inputted value for the array, the horizontal number again. And I want this to be an integer, an instance parameter, and then just general. That'll be a good place. Hit OK, and there we go. So here we go. So this is where we need our if statement for the horizontal array. If the user inputted value, in this case, horizontal number is less than 2, we want that value to at least be 2. Otherwise, it can be that horizontal number parameter. There we go. Okay, so right now, <laughs> the horizontal number parameter that the user put in is 0. Basically, the user is saying, I want there to be 0. Well, we're going to have to have at least one, guys. Come on. So the horizontal array will be 2. Great. So when I've changed this to 3, and we ac actually have a working array, we can see our horizontal array is 3. And so that leads us up here to the visibility. When our single H, our single object is visible, when is that? Well, that would be if the horizontal number is less than 2. Okay, right now it's not visible because I have it set to 3. And again, we just need to invert that for the array, so not the single H. Cool. So when I, here we go. Here's the ultimate test. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of here, and I'm going to turn preview visibility on. Once I do that, come back in here, I can see, yep, I have 3 in an array, and it's working. Now let's change this to 1 and see what happens. I have my 1 object. Perfect. Nothing broke, no errors. Even if I put this to 0, apply 1 object. Very good. I'm always going to see that, which is awesome. So let's put this back to 3. Hit OK. And now we're good here. I need to load this back in, not to the project, but to my array, my full array, the rest of them. So yeah, we'll save this. Yep. I like to do that. So really the only thing that I need to do is if I look at these actually and I go into this group, if I select this and look at the instance parameters again, I could see, yeah, they're all taken up, but because I have made parameters associated to them. But look, my horizontal number, which is, that's the actual inputted value by the user, is associated to horizontal array. Well, I actually want to reassociate that to horizontal number. Click OK. Cool. And whenever I finish, we could see that we're actually seeing something that we want to see. And that's based on my current settings. I actually have one set to the horizontal and three set at the vertical. So what I want to do is come back into my family types. And what we can do is see if we can just see one object on both of them, just one and one. And so the reason we don't see that is because we also need to associate that single object that we just copied and pasted in the same place in this. We need to actually change that from the horizontal number again to not the horizontal array, but uh, the horizontal number. We rename these things, so that's just something to be aware of. Yeah, we have things on top of each other. That's We would expect to see that. So look at this. So I come back in here. That's exactly what I want to see because whenever I have horizontal number equals 1, I see 1. And whenever I have vertical number one, so literally I'm just seeing one. So if I put this to two, apply, I have two vertical. And if I put this to two for horizontal, then I have two. So, and I'd go back to one, like this is clearly working. This is exactly what we want. We base this is basically allowing the user to put any single number in, even if it's in zero, zero, I'm still gonna get one, which is awesome. And this is what you want because you know, people will break it, they'll they won't know to not put in zero one and then their family's gone. And what are they supposed to do? And so with that, we are done. I can simply load this into my project. Yep. And I don't know why you'd go to this trouble if you want to just have one, like one in both directions, but we have that option. We can do that now. Like, this is fantastic. I don't need to save this, but I can take this, and I can test it out in the project, which is what I would recommend that you do. I want to make these values one and one and see what the heck happens. And sure enough, I get no errors, no warnings, no nothing, and I get one single value, one single object there too. It's awesome. So whew, this is a long-winded video to show you how to make your arrays not break. And this would apply, you don't need to have multiple arrays built into the families for this to work. You can just do this in one plate. Like if you just have one array, just do that. You don't need to 
you won't end up having to do it twice, kind of like what we did, but because we had the horizontal and vertical. But really, that will do it. If you liked the video, if you learned something, which I hope you did, and I mean, my gosh, I learned something having to put all this together. But if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. It helps me out so, so much. And I can't thank you all who have. So that will do it. Have a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.